Hey guys, and welcome back to Truth With A Twist. I'm your host, of course, and every girl's gay best friend, Chad Turner. And you guys, I am sure you guys have seen the news over on Twitter. Um, and if you haven't, basically I trademarked the Chateau BG. Um, I did it for all the creators, you know what I'm saying? Like we put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into creating that organization only to have it stolen from us. And so you're not gonna throw stones at Chad and think that that's gonna be the last laugh. That's never been how I operated. And that's something that this group of people did not know about me. And so, yeah, I wanted to come and tell you guys the full and complete story of how we created the Chateau BG, how it was taken away from us, how I was slandered, and ultimately I came to file the trademark application. So, we got started around November 17th, 2023. Um, that's when we really put in the effort into creating the Chateau. Um, before the Chateau, I had on my own noticed that Cardi B's fan base did not have any organization to it. Um, I noticed that other fan bases, they put together like buying parties, streaming parties, things like that. But when Cardi B would make releases, there wasn't very much organization. I have a background in radio and television broadcasting. And so I saw a spot where they were lacking and I figured I would come and bring a solution. So my solution was, I know that the type of artist that Cardi B is, she's only gonna release either hip hop and rap, maybe an R&B song or a Spanish song. So I compiled all of the top 40, the urban and the Spanish radio stations across the entire country. Um, I put all of this information together in a spreadsheet. Everything was very clickable. It's very nice and neat. Um, and I have all of this information. And so I started to associate with Barty Gang on Twitter. Um, I, you know, started to publicly voice my support for Cardi B. I actually buy a lot of her merchandise and her music. And so once I saw things like buying receipts and things like that were of significance, I started to post mine. Um, things like buying vinyls and buying physical music, those are the types of things that like kind of get you a little bit more recognition. You're not just a digital music buyer, you actually do support the artist. And so, you know, I started to show my true and unwavering support for Cardi B and I started to publicly align with Barty Gang. Um, one thing that I noticed right off the bat was that a lot of the fan base were underage. Um, so that right there led me into, you know, why I felt like there wasn't any organization. A lot of these people are children. So I kind of, you know, um, felt the waters to see, you know, who I was out there. And I eventually met a guy named Woody over on Twitter. Woody was around my age. Come to find out he's just, what, five months younger than me. But I noticed that he was an adult. You know what I'm saying? And so I shared what I had created you know, on my own with him and let him know, you know, we should really start organizing with the fan base. Um, he agreed. He, he thought it was a great idea. And so, you know, I told him that we needed to, you know, kind of flesh this out. I wanted to create kind of like an old school street team, you know, back in the day, how they used to have like the posters and the t-shirts and going around and, you know, interacting with the people on the streets and, you know, making sure that they're aware that there is music either out or coming out, you know, making them feel included into the fan base and, you know, we, we we started to really bounce a lot of ideas back and forth. We ultimately ended up in a group chat on Twitter with a lot of the bigger Barty Gang pages, a lot of the established Barty Gang pages. Um, I was under the impression that they were passing the torch. Um, you know, we had Barty Gang Bank. We had Barty Gang Updates. There were quite a few different pages that you know, they already have carved out their spot within the fan base. And, you know, they were all a part of this. Barty Gang Radio, they all were a part of this. Um, somewhere in the communications, things started to break down. Um, it was communicated to me that, that the group of larger Barty Gang pages were not willing to work with us. 
that's the way that it was it was translated to me like they just wanted to hang going to things they didn't want to hand it over to people who were willing and able to take it over that's the way that it was presented to us and so it became this this game of tug and tug of war um in the midst of the game there was this particular twitter space that was being held um we had just gotten a release i think it may have been jealousy by offset and cardi b i think may have been the release um but Ken Barbie had come into the space to ask us how we all were feeling about the release. You know, it was a lot of fans in there and people were voicing their, you know, voicing their opinions about how they felt about the song. Well, my particular comment um, at the time, because Doja Cat had recently shaved her head and so she was walking around bald. And I mean, for real, for real, the joke was good. I was like, you know, I'm walking around like Doja Cat. I'm snatched bald, honey. You know what I'm saying? Because she, she literally ate her verse and I was snatched. My wig was gone. And so Woody removed me from the space. And in the moment, you know, I had never really been removed from a space. And so when I when I when when I got removed, I couldn't find the space again. So I went into our group chat to ask, you know, like what happened? I can't find the space anymore. I don't know what's going on. I thought it was a Twitter malfunction, but then I was ignored. And that made everything um, abundantly clear. Woody is my age. So there's no teenage games here. So immediately I saw it as a power play. You know, you have this um, proximity to Ken Barbie and you wanted to flex that on me. I was coming in, you know, I'm talking big. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to radio. And I don't know if he felt his position was threatened. You know, I'm showing all the things that I buy, you know, things like that. I'm not bragging about stand shit. I'm bragging from a consumer's point of view. So, you know, I felt like maybe he felt like his position was threatened. I'm not exactly sure, but I removed myself from the group chats in that moment. Um, I did not want to organize with that group of people anymore. I'm not one of those people who want to get into a power struggle with people because I know what I bring to the table. So for me to like bicker back and forth with some faceless at the time, um, anonymous voice on Twitter was just so far beneath me. Um, it wasn't worth my time. So I did not go to my timeline. I did not say anything to anyone else. I definitely let them know that I wasn't going to be doing any organization or anything like that. And then I started to get phone calls from a guy named Drew. Now, Drew was in the group chats with us as well. Um, he was much more of a demure personality. He was very much chill, very much um, from this was my initial impression. He was very much more elevated above the bickering. He did not have that kind of a personality to me initially. And so um, Drew ended up reaching out to me and wanting to, you know, bring me and Woody to a common ground. Initially, I was unwilling because I don't like fake shit. That's just one thing about me. Like, I don't like fake ass shit. I don't like fake ass niggas. I don't like fake ass bitches. I don't like that kind of shit. And I don't like the whole thing of we need to compete to see who is the top spot. Like, I'm not into that. I feel like, you know, if we all have personalities, we all can shine together. I come from working on radio. So I'm used to being in a team of other people who can shine. That's not an issue for me. Um, so I wasn't willing to talk about it. I wasn't willing to work anything out. You know, I felt like the entire thing was beneath me at that point because you're trying to coddle this parasocial relationship with a guy that is quote unquote Cardi's best friend. Like, and I personally didn't understand, you know, any of the gusto behind it. I'm a Cardi B fan through and through. That's it for me. Um, when it comes to Barty Gang, Barty Gang ends for me at Cardi B. So there is no proximity for me. You know, everybody else is just their own person on social media. Ken Barbie is a very cool person. I do not have anything negative to say about Ken Barbie whatsoever. Um, you know, it just was never that for me. 
you know, I follow Ken Barbie. I think he's a very, he's very quick witted. Okay. And a lot of people try to like make him into their punching bag for Cardi B because they can't get a response out of Cardi. And more often than not, they can get a response out of Ken Barbie. Hats off to him. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, they're only putting more and more money in Ken Barbie's pocket. So, um, you know, I, I really was done after that. Um, after a while, we ended up getting news that there was going to be another release coming soon. So that kind of like lit the fire under everybody again. Um, by this point, Woody, there was Woody, there was Porkchop, there was Drew, um, there was Trixie, there was me. Um, so something had happened within the group chat after I left. And I started to see that the other core members were starting to make certain tweets that let it be known that there was some sort of an issue and that they did not want to be associated in that way anymore, in that capacity. So I ended up reaching out and I found out that there was an internal issue with, you know, some of the other entities within Barty Gang. Um, I'm not going to speak on that because it has absolutely nothing to do with me. But um, with all of those remaining members, I did let it be known that ultimately I wanted to promote for Cardi B. I wanted to promote her singles. I wanted to really, really push for her album rollout. You know, I wanted to create this street team because it's something I truly believed in. So this was something that, you know, because I believed in it, I really, really wanted it to happen. It was something that we all believed in. It wasn't even just like a personal thing for just me. It was something for all of us. We really believed in it. So we decided we were going to create our own thing and we wasn't going to do it with the help or off the backs of the other group, the more established group. Um, there were other things that were said about those people in that group. I'm not really going to divulge into any details of that because for me, those things aren't important. Um, I did not have a bad rapport with those people personally. Um, some of them I did. Um, there was one instance where one of the big pages, we kind of got into a back and forth because I was promoting our next project and they felt like I was shading them, which I wasn't, but I got a slick ass mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like this mouth is slick as fuck. Y'all already know y'all have been here for a while, but I got a slick ass mouth and you can't just say certain things to me and expect it to just roll off my back. No, baby. <laughs> Our favorite artist is Cardi B. So, um... You know, I had that issue, but it was after the fact. So um, I didn't have any issues with those people and whatever problem they all had together had nothing to do with me. So um, we started to meet over on Clubhouse and started trying to strategize how we were going to move going forward. Um, I have audio clips to everything. As a matter of fact, um, I'm going to insert in a, a little clip just showing how we, you know, started planning things. Well, we were such and i'm not talking about old oh, people gotta bow down to you just know y'all are the go-to people who people can inbox or go go to and like we will also have like a suggestion box we will have a suggestion box as well we will so yeah we'll have we'll have all that um in store and in play so if you guys have like any suggestions on what y'all would like to see for chateau bg um y'all could speak now all right let me remember what i said i hit it on a sticky note i just threw it away hold on <laughs> i'm cleaning up um basically i just want to make sure that um we keep it fun so you guys just heard um, a little clip, just basically hearing how we started the planning process for what eventually became known as the Chateau Barty Gang. Um, it started over on Clubhouse, you know. Uh, Clubhouse was kind of our go-to place in the beginning. Uh, we had a group of people. By this point, uh, Barty Mimi was added in. Um, I did not know her beforehand. Um, she had come to a couple of Woody spaces as a fan of Trixie. And so um, that's how I got to know her. Uh, I really didn't, like there was no clicking or unclicking with that girl. I, I really just didn't know her. So throughout our experience on Clubhouse, you know, um, we kind of 
got into a couple of team building exercises. I'm gonna I'm leave those anonymous as well, just in case, because if somebody wants to bring them up, of course I have screen recordings of everything. But, um, you know, we had a couple of team building exercises that kind of felt like we were becoming a little bit closer. You know what I'm saying? We were we were forming a bond and forming a friendship and it felt very genuine in the beginning. You know, we had little things like, what do you think I look like? Because some of us were anonymous. And so based on each other's voices, we gave them like our impressions of what we thought each other looked like. Um, it started out very, very pure. Um, Trixie came up with the idea of moving over to Discord because we were going to be sharing files and things like that. Um, Trixie was the head of the design team. Um, so, you know, sharing files and things like that was going to be necessary. It's going to be a very necessary part of the process. What to say, Chad? I'm sorry. Um, do we still have that website that Cardistics worked on? The, the Beacons? I think so. Okay. If we, we, if we still have, I don't know. Boy, do we still have that? I don't know because that was under the that was under the former people. Um, and what I'm thinking about doing is doing no leftovers and just starting over new. Okay. Um, um, we starting our old thing, own thing because I don't want anything of the former. Um, well, and, and that's think, not throwing shade at anybody. I think that actual login information belongs to Cardistics, though, because he gave it to me. Oh, yeah. yeah well, we can reach out to him, um, Ted, and we can ask him in the, um, in the what you call it. I'm going to probably ask tomorrow because I told him I'll check on him um, because he yeah. had a family emergency. So I can mm -hmm. ask him tomorrow if he still has all that. And we can just get everything revamped and resent over, um, rechange everything over to Chateau VG. Um, CBG, and and we'll do it. We'll do it that way. But um, body gang party. I'm, I'm I'm proud of you too. Come with your baddest. Lead us. Put everything on the fucking floor. Mm. This Come really got me. Y'all know what my baddest design. Body this really got party. me thinking if I want to make a Discord. To be honest, but I'm just trying not to put too much on okay. myself. But I feel like a Discord would be nice because I'm in one and they yeah, have like that every... chat that they got, Trixie. That chat they got is from the devil. Yeah. I left out of there a, yeah. a long time ago. Um, the design team, basically what they did was created various edits, um, themed edits, sometimes not themed, just basically taking photos of Cardi B and remixing them with their own creativity and personality. And what we would do is promote those in, in hopes of getting notices from Cardi B. And during the bongos rollout, we actually got quite a few different notices. And it was a very genuine experience. Everyone was, you know, in very good spirits with that. Um, we all were just really, really excited for everything. Um, so yeah, uh, Trixie's idea was creating the Discord. So that's what she did. She created the Discord. Um, she did it with the help of Mimi and uh, Barty, Barty, Barty HQ. Um, the help of Mimi, though, was creating a CBG email account through Outlook and um, registering the Discord. So when she registered the Discord, she gave the password and the email address to everyone in the team. Um, also to all of the social media accounts that we had on all platforms, everyone that was a founder had the email and passwords to those accounts. So if we needed to upload anything to those accounts, we all had the ability to do so. Um, there was never any type of friction or anything like that because everything was created in all openness and transparency and love. So after, after we created all of the accounts, we started to have these town halls on Twitter spaces. Um, basically, the point of these town halls were just to let Barty Gang know that we had created something very special. Um, we had come up with the entire vision for what it was. We had a mission statement. We had a theme. Um, it was called Chateau BG. The theme was it was a big giant mansion that Barty Gang could come in and explore all of the rooms. Um, Trixie and Barty Gang's party came up with all of these different rooms within the Chateau. Um, we had different programs and things to keep Barty Gang interested and um, 
interactive during the down period. So we had come up with different shows. Um, Trixie came up with Trixie with the T where, you know, um, she had characters on her show. I was one of the characters. I had a show called Chatting with Chad where it was all about getting to know me because, of course, I'm a big personality and everybody knew that. Same thing with Trixie. It was just ways to kind of interact with us. Um, we quickly realized what our what our bigger role was. Um, due to certain things that had happened before we created the Chateau, um, ultimately my role and Trixie's role was to be the face and the voices of the Chateau. Um, Woody was going to be the voice of the Chateau. Porkchop was going to create the Barty Gang Trust, which was going to be a bank entity, a bank-like entity where... Um, Barty Gang can donate money for other Barty Gang members to be able to purchase the songs upon release. Um, so it was it was a really well oiled machine. Uh, Drew helped me out on the radio team and Trixie did the design team. As you notice, I did not mention what Mimi does and I'm going to get more into that later because we really don't know what she did. Um, so we had our shows, everything was set up, everything was really, really nice. And then the Grammys came. Now, when the Grammys happened, myself and Trixie ended up holding a Twitter space where we wanted to discuss Grammy fashion. We really wanted it to be a Barty Gang space. But um, when we when we got ready to get a flyer made for our space by the, de the design team, um, Mimi immediately called a meeting. She said we needed to have a meeting. Um, Actually, it wasn't immediate. We were she she threw up a concern about us having a Twitter space without consulting them. Now, meanwhile, we were already big personalities online. I have a big TikTok following. Um, Trixie has a um, copy pasta that's made about her. Um, very very big personalities here. That's that's my main thing. Like I just want to make have have fun because last time I did not have that much fun with the way that it was run before with the group we were in. So this time, let's make it fun. I will come up with games, more trivia. Um, so yeah, a game um, once a week. I feel like they'll be fine. I'm not sure if you guys want to give away money or if we're just doing this for the fun. I also will be hosting my own station head when, you know, when the album era officially starts, like we get a date promo, unlike a date album cover, I will be on my own station head, not the Barty Gang radio station head. And I'll play games on there too and may give away some coins. So I'll make sure it stays interactive. I also will report when we're having a shout to Barty Gang um, meetings on Clubhouse. But I feel like moving to Clubhouse was such a smart idea. I'm glad you guys did it because you're able to lock it, keep it very secure. So, yeah, that's all that I have for right now. If I think of something else, I'll come off mute. And you mean to tell me that we needed to clear through you that we wanted to have a Twitter space? So that was red flag number one. Um, what Trixie ultimately did was say, said take all of the Chateau BG logos off of the flyer. The flyer was made. We had the Twitter space. And right at the, at, like during the middle of the Twitter space, we got DM saying that we needed to have an admin meeting as soon as possible. So myself and Trixie ended our space. We went over to go and have the admin meeting. And I was promptly called annoying. And Trixie was told that she does snake shit and that she was a victim. So I started to speak up. This was Drew and Mimi who, who did this. This was on March the 27th of 2024. So when this happened, you know, we were in this space for like an hour and a half. And we were just trying to like defend ourselves and like try to basically let the team know like, hey, we're a team. Like at the end of the day, like, like we created something together. So like there is no I in team. Like I know you guys are feeling some sort of way because we are going out here feeding the fans, but there's no I in team. Like we're all still a part of the same team. So, you know, that was one issue. I ended up texting Woody and telling Woody like, hey, you need to come over into this discord because we've been out arguing for over an hour and a half because Mimi and Drew doesn't like me and Trixie. And he's like, oh, Lord, you know, you guys are grown. And he came over and, you know, it got real big and nasty. And then 
we were able to kumbaya and it was you know we're friends and we're a team and let's go get them buddy gang like it was very I don't know and that was the common theme for for a lot of the arguments it would start off really really nasty and visceral and then eventually it would turn into like a dick sucking contest like you know we couldn't have done this without you we care about you you are a valuable asset to the team and you know and maybe by like the third time that was watered down okay so the argument started you know and, and we never went to the timeline and talked about anything we would try to resolve these arguments behind the scenes and just keep pushing forward so eventually the steam ran out the steam ran out you know you're not gonna me personally you're not going to tell me I'm fucking annoying, bitch, and you want me to continue using my services for you. Like, no, I, I just don't operate like that. Like, that's that's not what it is. And so then it became a gaslighting situation. Oh, uh, you guys are holding on to things from before and you can't let it go. What do you mean, let it go? What do you mean? What do you mean? You want to have an admin meeting after everything we do. What do you mean, let it go? You don't like us. And so I was the first one that came out and said it like, y'all don't like us. Oh, don't say that. Why would you say that, Chad? Why would you say that? Don't nobody not like y'all. Baby, I have a degree in mass communications. Mass communications is communicating with 500 or more people. You're one bitch. You think I don't know you don't like me? I know you don't like me. Like, what do you mean? They're saying little shit like when we come into a space and we start talking now, all of a sudden, I don't even want to talk no more. Bad bitch. Like, so it, it got really, really nasty. Of course, myself and Trixie, because we didn't know what was going on, we never really fed into it. There was another scenario where myself, Drew, and Trixie were planning a radio request party on Twitter, on a Twitter space. And we were up late on Discord discussing how we were going to do it. We were going to get a flyer. We were going to, you know, this and this and that and that and that. And it was only us three in the Discord that talked about it. So the following morning, Trixie got up and put in the request for the, for the flyer. And she didn't mention Drew's name. So Mimi texts Drew behind behind our back, which we never even knew they had each other's phone numbers. We never even knew that they had side conversations behind our backs. We all thought we were founders and that we could all talk to each other about anything, even if it's things that we don't like about each other, we can talk about it. I mean, considering this bitch came into a meeting and said that Trixie was a snake and said that I was annoying. I mean, you clearly felt like you could say any fucking thing to us. So it was very, very strange when we found out they had each other's phone numbers and they were texting each other. And that's how we found out. So Drew comes into the the Twitter group chat and he's talking about, oh, you guys are trying to leave me out of stuff. And I'm like, bro, it's a flyer. Like the flyer can be fixed. It, we never even got a first draft. So now all of a sudden there is no radio request party because we're arguing so bad in the fucking group chat. Now we need to go over to Discord so that we can talk. And then the Discord, I'm being gaslit to be quiet while this nigga is basically just spewing lies. Like it was lies. Oh, Chad, I feel like y'all trying to take over the, the radio team for yourself and exclude me. What do you mean? That's a lie. Then when I say something, oh, oh, you're being disrespectful. You won't even let me finish because you're lying. That's a lie. That's a blatant fucking lie. Like, where are you getting that? We're trying to cut you out of shit. Like, where are you getting this? But little did I know, he was getting it from Mimi. And so, you know, things kept going on. It just kept going on and kept going on. And it got to the point where nobody wanted to participate anymore except for Mimi. Woody was off working or whatever the fuck he does um, because he's really quick to throw out how he works 140 hours wiping geriatric ass, but you live in these apartments that don't even have grass. And so it really blows my mind. Like that part of it really blows my mind. But he wasn't active. He wasn't active. Porkchop has a child, a teenage son, so she has a life outside of Stan Twitter. So she wasn't really active. Um, Mimi didn't do anything. 
So, of course, she doesn't have anything to do but keep notes on what the fuck we're doing and try to create problems for us. And then you got me and Trixie who are constantly out on the timeline selling this chateau. If you haven't joined the chateau by now, make sure you guys go and click the uh, Discord link. It's in our pinned tweet on the page. Um, you know, tr we, Woody throwing off to Trixie like, hey, Trixie, give us a live commercial. Everybody's relying on me and Trixie to sell these ideas. Hey, guys, just so you know, I'm having a, a Twitter space so that we can request the songs on the radio. I got this long list of radio stations and we're going to have fun. We're going to listen to music. We're going to make it a key you know what i'm saying like we're really 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 out here selling this shit we got more fucking keys and, and and we making edits with the chateau and we're out here really really putting this shit together we got a station here and we're on here with a schedule to run shows like we we were the ones that were doing all the fucking legwork we were doing all the legwork trixie got the design team pumping out edits on edits on edits on edits everybody's seeing them Everybody was seeing them. The creativity was flowing, honey. But the people who wasn't doing shit wasn't doing shit. So then all of a sudden, me and Trixie are talking because, oh, oh, I left this one out. During the, during the argument about the flyer, it was told to me and Trixie that we were in cahoots. Oh, you guys are in cahoots. And I'm like, in cahoots to do what? We got the biggest followers, like followings out of the whole crew. What would we need to be in cahoots for? Don't say to steal the Discord because if that would be the case, we could just build a Discord off our own names and faces. We wouldn't need the Chateau. So what are you talking about? So when we were told that we were in cahoots, we got each other's number and started to talk and compare different ideas. And that's, you know, how we started to piece together. You know, they're having conversations about us that we're not aware of. And they're having conversations about things that they're not sharing with us. Specifically, there was one time where we were in the Discord mm, and Mimi comes out and tells us like, ooh, and that's just like, ooh, I can't tell y'all that because because Woody didn't say that I could tell y'all. And so we're like, okay, well, that's fine. Well, can you just not tell us until we're allowed to be told, I guess? And then there was another time where Drew comes out like, oh, I don't think I can say, what do you think, Mimi? I don't think I can say nothing about that yet. And so at this point, we're like, well, shit, y'all having conversations and shit about shit. I thought we all was founders and we all was supposed to share the information together. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. No, we got it picture is crystal clear don't worry about it so that's when we knew it was a click within the click at that point all my steam was gone i'm like you know i really don't want to be a part of this anymore this isn't what i signed up to do we said we were going to be open and transparent and honest with each other we were going to keep everything open you know things is really really weird at this point you know, at this point, all I'm going to do is just retweet the shit from the Chateau. I'm not going to do any more radio request parties or anything. Um, I'm not coming to no more town halls or, or discord meetings or anything like that. I don't want to talk because I know that's the thing that y'all want from me the most. So now I don't want to do it. I'm going to do it for myself when I feel like doing it. And so um, that's what ultimately started rubbing me me the wrong way. Um, and and. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. See, she has this personality like she has to be the one that's in charge. I remember her telling us that, you know, she was the youngest and a bunch of sisters. She had a bunch of sisters and that they were older than her and that she had this issue with them trying to tell her what to do. And she always used this term like, y'all not going to little sis me. And so... That right there told me the type of person I was dealing with. Like, baby, you're a low self-esteem, anonymous as a bitch. Um, you will never get any respect or regard from me. Um, when things were cool, things were cool. But as soon as as soon as she started to be disrespectful, all the respect was gone. Because who the fuck are you? Who even are you? You're afraid to show your face. You're afraid to say what your real name is. I remember she was um, telling me about how she wrote letters to TLC as a child and she didn't know her mom was sending the letters off and that in the fan mail album, her name was in the booklet. And I had just recently bought the fan mail album, like the CD with the booklet. And so I asked her, like, what's your name? I'll go and take a picture of the booklet and, you know, 
try to find your name for you and give you your name since you haven't seen it in so many years. And baby, she wasn't giving that name up. I ended up taking a picture of the whole poster and she went and found her own name. It was like, oh my God, Chad. Oh, this is the greatest thing ever. Oh. And I was just like, oh. So yeah, we don't know her name. She wouldn't, she wouldn't identify herself whatsoever throughout the entire seven months. And so I found it awful odd when she wanted to be disrespectful. Because who even are you to think that you could even get in a position to disrespect me? Like, bitch, this lady doesn't know a single fucking thing about radio. There were several times where she regurgitated information that I fed to her. Like, baby, you can't get with me in my field of expertise. Now, if it comes to ordering food off a of DoorDash that looks like you ordered it out of a gas station, then hey, baby, you got me. When it comes to claiming other people's hard work is your own, you got me. But when it comes to this radio and television shit, oh, baby, you better take your motherfucking seat, pull some popcorn, and learn your fucking lesson. So... Yeah. Um, so um, we had a meeting on April the 27th where um, things were just it was really, really tense. I'm not going to lie. Um, Mimi spearheaded this meeting. She had a full list of notes of things that she felt like we were shortcoming on in all of our respective teams. Now, mind you, this lady was the note taker. That's all she did. She took notes. Um, she offered up little insights here and there, but ultimately, like if I had to give her a role within like what everybody did, she was a note taker, which is why that was what her pride and joy was, was the notes from the meetings. <laughs> it's because she would write the notes however she wanted to see fit. And because nobody else had access to editing those notes, um, whatever she typed out was basically what happened. So, um, during the meeting on April the 27th, you know, they come out with all of these concerns. Um, we were told that the radio team was slacking, even though all of the songs that were coming out were going top 40, top 10, you know, number one on, on radio. Um, we were told that we were slacking. Uh, we were told that they wanted to add someone else to our team. Um, they didn't clear that with me considering I was the one who created the radio team. Um, I was burnt out at that point. Um, Drew was in my DMs telling me that he was exasperated with everything that was going on within the team at that point. Um, he didn't understand why the radio team was being targeted, and I didn't either. And so he told me he was going to take a step back from the radio team. Um, I supported that. I was very frustrated myself. Um, during the meeting, it was brought up that Trixie was spreading herself too thin, which I don't understand how someone else can tell someone else that they're spreading themselves out too thin, especially when you're not doing anything. So that made Trixie uncomfortable and she no longer wanted to be a part of the radio team anymore. Um, they also told Trixie that she was tweeting too much on the Twitter page, which that's what got engagement because there was no engagement until Trixie kind of went against the grain and started like dragging and, and cutting jokes. Um, even the residents of the Chateau saw what was going on and they noticed that there was a definite difference between one specific person who made tweets on the Chateau page and everybody else. And so um, that made her uncomfortable and she didn't want to be a part of the social media team anymore. She was just going to do the design team and they were okay with that. Um, once Drew left the radio team, that left only me on the radio team. And also I didn't like how nasty things have become. We were called annoying. We were called bitches. We were called um, um, professional victims and things like that. The energy was nasty. The morale was in hell. Um, I was over it. I'm not going to lie. I needed a full fucking refresh. I needed a break from everybody. Um, so I said I wanted to take a break. I wanted a break away from the Chateau. Um, and no means that I ever say or communicate that I was leaving the chateau. I just wanted a break because the, the energy was nasty as fuck. Um, all of the people who were still in the meeting heard me say it. I said that the energy and the way that we treated each other was nasty as fuck and that I needed a break. Once it became 
everyone is starting to leave. Then Porkchop decided she wanted to speak up. She was, you know, she didn't want anybody to leave. You know, she realized that things had grown nasty. We were having too many admin meetings, which all of this shit was overdue. All of this shit should have been said. Um, you know, and she felt like we were losing the original vision. Again, all of this shit should have been said. So she seconded that we all just possibly needed a break. Um, everybody agreed that we were going to take a small break with the exception of Mimi. Mimi wanted to keep everything going. She wanted to keep doing the uh, Twitter page. So her and Gigi, which is a person that we brought in as a designer, who we made a moderator because she didn't talk too much and she basically got shit done. Um, along with Barty Gang's party, who is a minor child who clearly has no parental influence in his life and seeks out um, positive reinforcement from people he doesn't know on Twitter. Um, those people, um, those people were the ones who um, wanted to continue going forward along with Mimi. These people were the people who added the least to the chateau. Um, and honestly, I felt like this was the very first time that Mimi made it apparent that she wanted a bigger role than what she had. Um, so yeah, we took the break. Um, my birthday eventually rolled around on May the 12th. Of course, the Chateau shouted me out as being a founder. Uh, happy birthday to me. I loved it. All of the residents told me happy birthday. It was pretty awesome. Um, but then a couple of days after my birthday, I noticed that all of our roles were gone. And Trixie comes and she tells me that the password to the Chateau was changed on her. So, you know, I get on Discord on my PC and get to looking around like, you're right, I don't see the fucking admin meeting room. Like, I don't know what's going on. Let me call Woody. So I call Woody and we get to talking and everything like that. And, you know, Woody makes it apparent he doesn't want to talk to Trixie. Um, he felt like there was an estrogen war that was going on, his words. Um, he wanted me to ensure that if they changed the password to the Discord back, that Trixie wouldn't steal it, which I don't know, and she doesn't either. We've definitely talked about this several times. We don't know where that idea could have even come from because nobody has ever even alluded to anything like that. That's never been part of the program because we all created it together. We are the face and the voice of it, so why would we ever want to steal it? So... You know, that was a really weird conversation to have. Um, I was told on the phone on that in that phone call that Drew was problematic by Woody. Woody told me Drew was problematic um, and that he was happy that Drew was no longer a part of the Chateau um, and that he always saw the radio team as being me. So I, I thought it was weird. Him and Drew had had some sort of a falling out. I'm not going to talk about that because it has nothing to do with me. I don't even know the specifics about it. So when he said all those things to me, I felt it. I found it to be very weird. Um, ultimately, nothing was changed back. No roles were giving back. They continued to play in our faces. Um, by this point, I was just retweeting here and there. Um, and then on May the 16th, we had the final blowout that I had. Um, I got up that day. I went outside and cut my grass. I have three acres of land that I live on. It takes me two hours to cut the grass. I am not on social media when this is going on. So when I finally do get back on social media, I go to the Chateau's page and I'm starting to retweet. And then Mimi is like making these. She had been making these posts in the group chat for a couple of days. I knew what the posts were. She's like saying these things about being direct and coming to the person that you got a problem with. And since she's the person with the problem, why not come to her? She was very aggressive, very problematic. It was very much um, an argument bait and nobody was taking a bait. She was literally posting in this group chat, making herself look like a stupid damn fool. And nobody was acknowledging her whatsoever. So she was literally crashing out in the DMs. Um, I was talking to Trixie on the phone about it. Like this girl is out of her motherfucking mind. If she thinks I'm even going to pay her any, I'm not even going to pay this bitch dust. She's going to get paid air. Like, cause I don't even want nobody to see shit coming from my direction towards her. Like, I don't know this bitch. She's a literal anonymous voice. You don't, I don't value you. 
you don't make that much of an impact to me. So I ignored the bitch. And so finally, after like two days, three days, she tags my name and she's like, I'm going to need you to post the posts on the Chateau's page and not just post from your favorite person. How would I know when people are posting on the fucking Chateau's page? You bitches are having fucking secret meetings and shit like that, establishing schedules and shit like that. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not that deep into it, honey. This is, this is a stand group. Like, I'm just retweeting the tweets that were tweeted today. Like, I don't, I don't care. So I jumped in the DMs and I told her, like, quit fucking page watching me. And she's like, oh, page watching never that. I just can see everything that goes on on the Chateau's page. And then I checked the bitch, like, then you can see that I'm currently retweeting everything. And you're just in the here, you're just in here trying to create a scene. Baby, listen. <laughs> Whatever concerns you feel you may have for Chad. I want you to write them down on a sheet of paper and I want you to give them to Woody. And if Woody feels like they're worth my time, he'll deliver them to me. So then she's like, well, why would I go to somebody else when I can just come to you direct? You figure it out. Because see, you need a salary to come to me direct. Especially if you want a response. You want a response from Chad, bitch, pay me $2,000. I don't know you. You're nothing to me. So give you a response for what? So it was in that moment I left the group chat. I started texting Woody. I'm like, hey, your friend is being extremely disrespectful and you're not going to have a chateau. Like all of the creators are going to leave and I'm going to go to my timeline. Like, well, before I even got to the point where I'm like, I'm going to go to my timeline. I'm like, you know, you need to check her. Like, this is your thing. Now, all of a sudden, Kim Barbie told you to do it. Kim Barbie ain't tell you to do shit. Like, check this bitch. She doesn't do shit. Oh, well, if y'all can't get it together, then I'm going to need you to just do what you need to do to, for your sanity. Oh, well, for my sanity, I need to go tell all however many hundreds of people because y'all told me I brought in 100 people in one day because I went viral on TikTok talking about it. So I'm going to need to go and tell all of the people that I brought into here how y'all are treating me. That's what I need to do for my sanity. Oh, well, if you feel like you need to go to the timeline after you left on April the 27th, that's only as far as my eyes made it, y'all. I immediately went to the um, timeline and I made this video. So, as y'all can see, I didn't get disrespectful. I didn't let none of my emotions come out at all. I just separated from the chateau. Baby, why I do that? Are those nobody loser ass, nothing ass, fat, funky, frowsy ass losers started harassing me, y'all, for damn near 90 days. Damn near 90 days. This shit has been going on for a very long time. Um, running copyright strikes on my YouTube page. Then I went and posted all the videos to my Facebook page. They're running copyright strikes on my Facebook page, but I'm getting out of the copyright strikes on YouTube and the copyright strikes on Facebook. They're going to leave after 90 days. So I had three copyright strikes. They had my page scheduled for deletion. I went and uploaded five out of the six videos to my Facebook page and sent it over to YouTube. They went and ran copyright strikes on my, U on my, on my Facebook page. So what I did was, um, once I, uh, with that final video that I, I couldn't find it to re-upload it to my Facebook page. So what I did was I filed an application to trademark Chateau BG. That's their website, ChateauBG.com. <laughs> so there's no the chateau mr chateau uh uh the chateau there is no more chateau bg it's mine it's mine and the rest of the creators who built that motherfucker and i dare a bitch i dare a bitch to use my fucking business name i dare you you can't trademark barty gang there will never be another iteration of Chateau BG. It's dead. You throw a rock at Chad, Chad's gonna throw a motherfucking bulldozer. Checkmate, bitch. So, um, 
if you test me, I'm going to issue you a cease and desist. If you continue to test me, you're going to fly your 600 pound ass to Ohio, to federal court. You're going to pay me $10,000. You're going to pay for my lawyer. You're going to pay for the court costs. And you can take it out that anonymous bitch out of Miami's pockets. I don't know what possessed you motherfuckers to think that you were going to test me. I don't know what possessed you motherfuckers to think that I was going to be the same as you guys. I'm not a loser. You go back into your life wiping that geriatric ass for the rest of your motherfucking life, bitch. You sat on that motherfucking Twitter space and talked all that motherfucking shit. And I dismantled you with little to no effort. You're going to remember me for the rest of your measly, poor ass lives. You cousin fucker. Living in fucking Section 8 housing and you got a degree in nursing. I already know your whole motherfucking tea. Getting unemployment and shit because you won't work. Boy, get the fuck out of here. And then that bitch in Miami sitting up flaunting checks that don't even fucking belong to her. I never valued you that much to care. I don't give a fuck. All the rest of that shit that I did to y'all, the, the motherfucking copyright strikes and all that shit, I would do it again. You should have just got rid of my logo. I made that logo. And no matter how you try to shape it up, like, oh, it was just a font. It was a fucking logo, bitch. And if it was just a font, why you ain't use another one? You thought you were going to throw stones at Chad and you thought you were going to win. You, faggoty ass Noah, in the closet ass Mark, all you motherfuckers, all of y'all. Um, pork chop, because I don't know if you're ever going to see this or not, but you were a casualty of society, honey. You let that fat, overweight, diabetic raccoon sit up on that space and say, I only donated $22 to you. When in reality, I donated $62.50. $350 of it came from a different resident, but $62.50 of it was for me. So, um... That's why you had to get your lashes. And I still want my motherfucking money back, bitch. <laughs> oh, so this is it. Um, the Chateau is dead. Okay. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do going forward. I know I'm going to go back to doing what I was doing before I ever met that band of losers um, and tried to create that stand organization. Um, I'm definitely never going to do that again. Um... So, yeah, I just wanted to come on and let y'all know, you know, how I got sucked into a fucking cult on Stan Twitter. Oh, yeah. And I left this part out. Um, those people had Twitter spaces for over 12 hours to talk about me and Trixie. Um, over 12 hours of pure slander, lies, um, made up narratives and shit like that. They would try to gaslight us talking about, yeah, they're going to spiral out for weeks behind this. Like, bitch, you are literally lying. You literally running from platform to platform to watch videos about me so that you can try to craft a narrative about me. Bitch, you're fan the fuck out. Like, and then I was clocking her like, bitch, you're fucking obsessed with me. Why would I be obsessed with a nigga named Chad? Why would I be obsessed with this 40-year-old man? As you proceeded to talk about me for 12 motherfucking hours. 12 hours in a public forum. So now the bitch done deleted her motherfucking Twitter page. The Chateau page has been deleted. Barty Gang Trust has been deleted. Pork Chops Pork Chop page has been deleted. Her regular personal page is still here, but that page is deleted. I had a weirdo ass bitch named Pretty Brown Goddess talking shit about me, calling me bitch ass niggas and shit. A weirdo ass bitch named Q McBoo on here trying to spin narratives about me and shit because she knew the shit wasn't going to work without me. So she on here talking shit about me this bitch do eyebrows for a fucking living like bitch be fucking serious um pretty brown goddess or pretty brown guy whatever the fuck that bitch name is like bitch you're a whole fucking nurse on here trying to talk about other people's bodies and what type of medical procedures and shit they may or may not have had like i've never seen such a loser ass group of motherfuckers on twitter grown ass people that's like kicking 40 in the ass like me and you bitches ain't got shit to show for it. You don't got a motherfucking life. And you sit up on fucking Twitter thinking that you were going to dog me. Yeah, that's why all you motherfuckers ain't got shit to do now. Now y'all ain't got shit. And guess who do? 
<laughs> and anybody who want to go and do their own research, um, I'm going to put the serial number to my trademark application right in the description box. And y'all can go right over to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office website and search up Chateau BG and see your boy as the owner. Um, that's all I got for you guys. You guys have a great rest of your day.